Welcome to Garden City Church, a place you can belong before you believe. This week, George gives us another great sermon about following Jesus and what it's like to radiate his love. If you'd like to partner with us here at the channel, there's three ways you can do that. You can like and subscribe, you can share this video with a friend, or you can partner with us financially. You can do that through our website or by mailing us a check. We love all of you so much. Let's get into the word with George. Thanks for joining us in this series called Following Jesus, where we're simply answering the question, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Not follow just a set of rules or a set of rituals or even a system of control or follow some system that gives you power and control over others. No, we want to focus on how Jesus defines following him. And we've looked at some of the invitations to follow him. Uh, the first invitation is often come and see. And that's uh, an incredible invitation that I think we always need to remind ourselves of. The second invitation we've looked at is often come and follow. Like, trust me, learn from me, center your life and identity on me. And the third invitation we're going to be looking at today is come and be love. Come and be love. Jesus called his disciples at one point uh, like this. He said, love each other as I have loved you. That is a powerful statement. Short little verse, but that pulls us into some deep waters. Now we're going to be focusing on that, but to set it up, I also wanted to read this verse from Matthew. Jesus said, you've heard that it was said, you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harass you so that you'll be acting as children of your father who is in heaven. I love that Jesus uh, gives us this call that, that pulls us um, beyond what, <laughs> the boundaries of what is comfortable, um, of just loving you know, our family members, loving the people we're supposed to, or maybe we have to, or we should, but, but loving beyond that, loving in a way that reflects the love of the father who loves everyone, even our enemies. Jesus calls us to love our neighbor and our enemies. And so today we're going to be considering the call to love, but we're going to start off with our friends and our neighbors and people around us. Kind of start there and the next week we'll look at that, that where Jesus turns up the heat and says, we got to love our enemies too. So let's jump in. John 15, 12, Jesus said, this is my commandment. This is my call to you. Love each other as I have loved you. Today, we're going to break that down into two areas. Notice Jesus says, love each other and then just as I have loved, loved you. So we're going to talk about first how Jesus has loved us. And the reason for this is to be love, we have to see love. Like we have to go to the source of love. And Jesus, the Bible teaches us, is the source of of love. He's the expression of love. So the question we have to ask is, how did Christ love? How has Christ loved us? I'm going to refer to Henry Nouwen a few times in this uh, teaching because I think he, he has, he's got such insight on the way of love. And Henry Nouwen talks about this love of God, this love of Jesus as the first love is what he calls it. God loves us first. God loves us before we're capable of loving him or anything else. God's love is a before love, a first love. And Henry writes, the first love says, I love you before you could love anyone or before you could receive love from anyone. I have accepted you. You are accepted. You are loved no matter what mother, father, brother, sister, school, church, society does. You are born out of my love. In me, there is no hatred, there is no revenge, there is no resentment. I love you. So the words of Henry now and about Christ's love, the, the first love of God. And I just want to, for a moment, just encourage you to, to dwell on, to meditate on the ways that you've experienced the love of God, the love of Jesus in your life. Um, think practically like I'm breathing right now. I, I'm sitting in a room right now. My, the friends I have, the good that I have in my life. And I know that all of us have challenges, but in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the darkness, there is light and there is love 
Where has God's first love that holds your existence been made real, been made manifest, been made visible to you? So you know it, you can feel it, you can experience it. I want you to maybe journal about that this week. Take some time to journal. Like You can write on your phone maybe in the notes section or if you have a journal, just write it down or just grab a piece of paper from your printer and just write down the ways you've experienced Jesus' love this week or this year or in your life, things that matter to you. I'd even encourage you to, if you want, you can do an exercise of reading through some of the book of John or one of the gospels and just take note of the ways that Jesus loved people And then use that maybe as a lens or a window to look into your life for the ways you've experienced the gentleness, the humbleness, the the sacrificial, generous love of Jesus, the, the love, the creative love of God the Father in your life. And write those things down. Make that love personal. For me, I just think about, you know, God's love enables us to love one another. And it's this love, this first love from God that enables us to be love to each other. And that's the love that we're turning to right now. Jesus said, this is my commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you. Love radiates, think about that. Love radiates from people, from hearts. Love radiates warmth and light. Book of John, it says this, John the Baptist, was a burning and shining lamp. And at least for a while, you are willing to celebrate in his light. This idea that John the Baptist uh, radiated some type of warmth, some type of light that, that that was moving people, that people like could see and be around and people wanted it. The darkness wanted it for a little while and then they re- it rejected it. Uh, the darkness in people's hearts actually ended up rejecting John eventually. But there was this love that radiated from John the Baptist. Another section um, in John chapter one, it actually says about John the Baptist, a man named John the Baptist was sent from God and he came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him, everyone would believe in the light. So it, it, it kind of gives us a little more context for this idea that, that John uh, was a light. Um, he was like a lamp that provided, that radiated warmth and, and light. John was a small and partial light pointing to the full and complete light of Jesus. Isn't that cool? Kind of like a guiding light that was pointing toward the the fullness and the complete light. John's light was sent to make the light and love of Jesus visible. There's something about radiating love in in humanity. When we when we radiate love, not resentment and hatred and ugliness and fear, when we're radiating love, there's something in that that makes the love of Jesus and makes the love of God visible. Henry Nouwen wrote, discipleship or giving expression to God's love takes many forms. Some people are passionate in their love. Others have indignant love. They they see injustice and immediately go to it. Others have a very gentle love. They radiate welcoming. Wherever they are, they create welcoming. Wherever they are, they create community. There are others with a quiet love and it's very hidden. These are all forms of love, and we each have our own way. Isn't that powerful? We each radiate our own love that reflects God or channels the love of God. He goes on to write, God's love is so rich and broad, it takes many people to make it visible. The many forms of love support each other. I love that. We, not, there's not one person who can express all the, the forms of light or all the forms of love that represent God. Like God needs all of us to give a picture, although imperfect, a picture of his love. So how does your light and love make the love of Jesus visible? How does your love support the love of other people, the light and radiation of other people? Let's make this a little bit more practical and and specific uh, about the way you love, the way you're designed to radiate God's love. So I'm going to give you a few questions just to reflect on 
And again, maybe journal this, put this in your phone as you're thinking or however you process and reflect best. But here's a few questions to make this more practical. So what kind of love or light do you radiate? How does your love impact a room when you walk into it? Think about that for a second. And I actually encourage you, maybe talk to some people you trust, people that you love and that, that care about you and ask them like, what changes when you walk into the room? Like, what do you bring? What do you radiate that, that's, that's good and that's, that, that is different from other people? And different people might use different words, but look for themes in your life. Look for themes on how you radiate life and love when you walk into a room or into a group or into a situation. That can be really insightful. Now, fear can cause our light to radiate too dimly or too, or too cold, like not, not the warmth that we want, kind of a cold light or a distant light. Um, fear of what others think about us, comparison um, with other people's, you know, way of loving and gifts that they might have that we don't have. And we start comparing ourselves and, you know, sometimes envy or fear begin to build up because of that. Um, this fear of not being enough or not having what others have. Or sometimes like an, uh, uh, kind of a compensating like overzealousness, like being too passionate um, without self-control can cause us to burn too bright and too hot. And we don't want our light to burn people or to blind people, surely. We want our light to radiate, our love to radiate in ways that warm the heart and help other people see clearly and more deeply. How do you know when your expression of love might be radiating a little too hot or a little too cold, a little too bright, a little too dim? What shadows might follow your light? I think all of us have a shadow that follows our light. Like there's a, an imperfection, a brokenness that we may carry a woundedness, a pain, or like a deep a selfishness or actions that are really a shadow to our light. Now, when I think about these questions I th you know, that I'm asking you, I think about my life and um, some of the themes that, that, um, that come up when I've talked with people or just in conversation, I've, uh, gifts or ways that like my love radiates is honesty. Like I'm at my best when I, you know, I'm given like my honest opinion and I, and I, I don't want people to think more of me than I am or less of me. I just want to be who I am and for them to know that. Um, another thing is like, I like to collect wisdom and paradigms that, that help people maybe see the world differently. And I just love it when I, I can help someone maybe just, just tweak the way they're looking at something and just see it very, very differently. Maybe see things they didn't see before or from a vantage point. I, that just, you know, is, is part of my makeup. Uh, so, and I love collecting wisdom and like passing that along. And I also, another thing is just, I, I love to laugh with people. I love hu like humor is like uh, one of the ways I shine light. In fact, I was at a, I was at a retreat and a, someone I didn't even know very well came up to me and they asked, they said, Hey, is, is humor, uh, one of the ways you shine your light and your love. And it got me thinking, I was like, yeah. And character tests and strengths and things, humor is one that, that definitely comes up. And so if I focused on that for a second, this is kind of how I'd answer some of those questions. So with humor, sometimes uh, if, if I, it's not been highlighted to me, like in parts of my life, like I don't even feel like it's that important. Or, but, it, but it actually is kind of central to who I am. Um, but it doesn't seem that important to other gifts, so I often don't think about or focus on it. And I often see other gifts and other great leaders. I'm like, oh, that's amazing, and, and uh, kind of it kind of diminishes sometimes in my mind the the gift of humor. Like, ah, oh, it's not that important. But it it is how part of how God designed me, and at its best, it can help bring insight and bring people together. You know, or laughing or resonating together about something, um, putting people at ease. Um, it can de-stress situations that are highly stressful, like with just some good humor or like recognizing honestly what's happening in a humorous way. It can just like bring the tension out of the, out of the room or out of people's hearts. Uh, it can help me connect heart to heart with, with people. You know, uh, when my humor is radiating a little too hot though, it can take over. It can, uh, it can sometimes 
uh, hurt people's feelings, you know, especially if I'm if I'm leaning toward laughing at something or someone not with someone. And that's a big shift when I'm not laughing with when it moves toward laughing at or like an object of of humor that can be a little cutting, um, especially when I was in high school. That was an area I really needed to work, work on because I couldn't hurt people. And that's a kind of love or radiate uh, love that radiated a, a, a way that in a way that burned um, people. Now, when that, that gift that, uh, of humor is it's radiating too cold, you know, I don't feel myself at all. I don't feel my own emotions and I don't bring the flavor of joy to people in the rooms that need it. Uh, when it's too bright, it pushes uh, people out and it can dominate too much. When it's too dim, it doesn't highlight other people or, or beauty or goodness. It doesn't uh, highlight and encourage people in kind of fun ways. It doesn't um, provide helpful insights the, the way I can. And the shadow side can really, of my humor can uh, really become, um, well, it's really when it becomes a, a coping mechanism for all the craziness in the world. Like there's a degree that that's okay, I think, but sometimes it can be too much of a, like a becoming protection shield that disconnects me from people and even my own emotions. So I have to watch out for that. But when it's at its best, when it's like, when it's bright, when it's providing clarity, when it's um, warm, it, it brings me life. It brings me joy. It brings me deep insight, a better insight into myself. And it's, and it's inclusive. And it's uh, my humor at its best hopefully lets people know that I love them and that I care about them. And Henry Nouwen mentions all these forms of love. Some of it's more brash. Some, of it's more, some people have more of a justice orientation. Some people have a more hospitality you know, orientation. Some have a more contemplative or reflective orientation extrovert, introvert, you know, there's just so many gifts and ways that people express their love, but we each have our own way and that's okay. God's love is so rich and broad that it takes many people to make it visible. That's what Henry says. The many forms of love support each other. I love that. So how do you support the light from others in your community? How do you support their light, their love? How do you lift them up, spotlight them? Uh, how do you encourage and help others shine bright and warm? How have others encouraged you? How have they done that? Who have those people been? Are you grateful for them? I just want to finish with this. Are there areas you are expecting family and friends to radiate like you? Are you expecting people to just be like you one way? Like love should just be one way. And it's like me. That's a tendency for leaders sometimes to try to conform everybody to the way they are built, the way they're designed to radiate love. But that squashes unique and distinct abilities that God has given people to love. So how do we allow others to radiate the love of Jesus the way they were called to? Um, how do we, you know, cultivate that and magnify that, amplify it? Where do you need to let go of your expectation for how they're designed to radiate love. Maybe it's your kids, your spouse, um, your family members, your, de your friends. How can you grow in appreciating the vast kaleidoscope of colors and radiance, different people shining God's love the best they can? Again, let's finish with a quote from Henry. We all have our unique vocation. We all have a call to follow. Listen, and you will know what your next move is. You will experience a desire to do it because it is always a move from fear to love. If you're feeling anxiety, you're feeling like lost, you're feeling like, what do I do? Like, how do I move toward love? How, how can I be more loving? How can I be more me? How do I follow Jesus? What does that look like? Following Jesus makes you more like him and more like you at the same time. It is a paradox. The more we become like Jesus, the more we become uniquely us. And we move away from fear and we move toward love. Jesus said, this is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. So would you pray with me? I'm just going to pray that whatever way you're, you're feeling to, sh to shine that light of love, to be love, to respond to the call to be love, that you would respond to that today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be the light, 
the light that shines in our hearts, the light that reveals the truth. You've made each one of us to radiate light that reflects you, God, that reflects you, Jesus, that gives a, a bit of a picture of who you are. Would you help me to say yes to the way you've designed me to be love? I want to follow you, Jesus, and learn from you the way of love, to be love like you, and to be love the way you made me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys so much. Come back next week, and we're going to be looking how to love those people who are difficult to love. Take care. God is wilder than the seas. His love is deeper than my valleys. His grace is holding on to me. His hands are leading where I can't see. I'm gonna lift my hands until I feel it. I'm gonna open my heart until you heal it. I'm gonna trust in you. Pressing down on me You are relieving my anxieties And even when I don't believe I have a God who still believes in me I'm gonna lift my hands until I feel it I'm gonna open my heart until you heal it I'm gonna trust in you I'm gonna